Following her first husband's death Joan would become much sought after in marriage. She would very soon come to attention of Edward, the Black Prince, son of King Edward III and heir to the English throne. Aside from being known as the beautiful women in the kingdom at the time, Joan would have many virtues that would make her a viable match for Prince Edward. Firstly, she would be of noble rank and also she has a proven track record of successful pregnancies in a time when infant mortalities were high such a record would prove valuable when producing an heir to the English throne. It would seem that Joan had already been noticed by Edward prior to her husband's death as Edward had previously brought her gifts back from his military campaigns in France. Contrary to rumor it seems that Edward's father was supportive of his son's pursuit of Joan as he would assist his son in obtaining papal dispensation to marry Joan from Pope Innocent VI, due to Edward III and Joan being first cousins. On 10 October 1361, the Archbishop of Canterbury would marry Joan and Prince Edward at Windsor Castle. Both of Prince Edward's parents, King Edward III and Philippa of Hainaut would be in attendance. Joan would move to Bordeaux in southern France in 1362 when he husband, Edward was mad the Prince of Aquitaine. Aquitaine was an English principality in France, which England has held since 1152, when Eleanor of Aquitaine married the English monarch at that time, Henry II. During their time in Aquitaine, Joan would give birth to two sons. Edward of Angoulême who was born in 1365 but died aged five in 1370 and Richard who would become Richard II, in 1367. In the same year as Richard was born, Edward would join forces with King Peter of Castile to fight against Peter's half-brother, Count Henry of Trastamara, at the Battle of Nahara. The battle would be a resounding victory for both Edward and Peter but after that battle Peter did not pay Edward's troops for their services. Edward would take two of Peter's daughters, Constance and Isabella of Castile, in order to secure payment and would marry them to English nobility, including the marriage of Constance to Edward's brother, John of Gaunt. Whilst Edward was away, Joan was forced to raise an army to defend Aquitaine against the French who had taken advantage of the Black Prince's absence. Tragedy would befall Joan and her husband, when their son, Edward of Angoulême, second in the line to the throne would die from the bubonic plague in January 1371. Edward's funeral and burial would be held in Bordeaux in France under the organization of Joan's brother-in-law, John of Gaunt, as her grief-stricken husband's health was starting to fail. Edward's body though would be exhumed by his brother, Richard II in 1388 and reburied in England. Joan would return to England later in 1371 as her husband was unable due to his health to carry out his duties in Aquitaine. Joan's husband did attempt another military campaign in France in 1372 but his failing health would force him to return unsuccessfully to England in June 1376. Edward, the Black Prince would die in his own bed from dysentery in the Palace of Westminster on 7 June 1376 at the age of 45, just a week before his birthday. He would ask his father, to protect his eldest son Richard who would be next in line to the throne. Edward was buried in Canterbury Cathedral on 29 September 1376. Within a year of her husband's death, Edward III would pass away on 21 June 1377. This meant that Joan's eldest son with her last husband, Richard, would now be crowned king at the age of 10 years old. Joan would have to support the Richard's regency until he was able to come of age to take full control of the kingdom. Joan would be sorely tested in this time, especially during the Peasants' Revolt in 1381. Joan was a strong supporter on the Peasants' cause, but the Peasants' Revolt was starting to turn violent. Despite this, the Peasants, led by Watt Tyler, would also show respect to Joan, especially when Joan would encounter Tyler and his mob on her return to a pilgrimage at Canterbury Cathedral but would be treated would be saluted by the mob and provided with an escort through Blackheath. The peasants' revolts would be a defining moment in her son's reign, when he crushed the rebellion in 1381 using military force, which in turn improved his standing at court and within the kingdom. The next year, Joan would witness the marriage of Richard, to Anne of Bohemia. Anne was the daughter of the powerful, Charles IV, Holy Roman Emperor and King of Bohemia. Anne was the fifth child and fourth daughter of Charles IV. 
After the events of the Peasants' Revolt and her son taking full control of the kingdom with his new wife, Joan would lead nearly a relatively a quiet life up until her death. Her death though would be overshadowed by a great tragedy with her wider family. During a Scottish campaign in 1385, Joan's son, John Holland first Duke of Exeter from her marriage with her first husband, Thomas Holland, would become broiled in argument with a favourite of Queen Anne, Sir Alf Stafford. Holland was Richard's half-brother and also the husband of Richard's cousin, Elizabeth of Lancaster, daughter of Richard's uncle, John of Gwant. Stafford would be killed in the argument, and Holland would seek sanctuary at Beverley. Richard would condemn Holland to death, which would lead Joan to plead for over four days to her son for mercy to spare John's life. Richard would eventually concede to his mother's plea, sending Holland on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Unfortunately for Richard, his concession would be too late, as his mother would pass away, probably from a broken heart on the fifth day in August 1385 at the age of between 57 to 58. Joan had never changed her will since her first marriage and was buried alongside her first husband, Thomas Holland at Greyfriars in Stamford, Lincolnshire. It is never known whether she had deliberately chosen not to change her will or not, or whether she changed it back following the death of her last husband. It is doubtful that Edward, the Black Prince had known of this, as he had built a chantry chapel for her in the crypt of Canterbury Cathedral. Joan's image can be seen both in the ceiling bosses of the crypt and another boss in the north nave aisle of the cathedral, 